Welcome back to part 9 of the Circle Jump game development series. In this installment, we're going to test the game out on my phone, fix a couple of bugs, and add a little bit more visual flair. Alright, let's get started. So before going any further in the game, I thought that it would be a good time to do a little Android testing. So I exported the project onto my Android phone. I have a Samsung Galaxy S8, and uh, I realized also, as I'm recording this, that I don't have a good camera to show you uh, what it looks like on the phone. But the project exported fine and it ran, but there was a problem. And it had to do with the HUD. And I'm going to show you in the HTML export has a similar problem. So I'll show you what it looks like, and then uh, we'll look at how we can try fixing it. So here's the game running in an HTML export and watch what happens when I hit play. See that stuttering? Let's go there. There, do you see that? So it seems that whenever we play this animation on the HUD, the one that shows the message, this animation, is lagging like crazy. And on the phone, it's very, very bad. And so I did some experimentation. One thing I thought was it might be GLES 3. So I switched over to GLES 2 and I exported it on the phone. And it was a little better, but it wasn't, still wasn't working right. It still wasn't smooth. And so I was about to give up and thinking that maybe we would have to go with, you know, do this message in a different way. When I realized that if I go over here into the project settings, under rendering quality, there's an option called use oversampling. For dynamic fonts and guess what we're using for our message we're using a dynamic font so if I turn that off it becomes silky smooth on the phone so for now I'm gonna stick to GLES 3 again we're still I'm reserving that decision until we get some more testing done but for right now it works fine with either so let's talk about exporting real quick uh, the best place for you to go if you want to learn how to export your project is on the Godot docs there is an exporting tutorial and it talks about exporting the Dodge the Creeps tutorial game but the process is pretty much the same you have to download the export templates for the version of Godot you're using and then you can set up presets for whatever platforms you want to export the project to and in the case of Android you're also going to need to download the Android SDK and the Java JDK. And that will install all of the tools you need to have your computer talk directly to the phone and or whatever device you have and let you generate your key store, which you need in order to um, compile the project. And when you do that, it's really nice. I, when I plug in my phone to the USB, I get this window, this little button appears right here, which lets me export. If I click on the little robot, I can choose my phone and it will compile the project, upload it to my phone, and launch it all with one click. If you're curious how to do it for iOS, it's a bit more cumbersome. You have to have Xcode installed, which means you have to be on a Mac, and there's a few more steps you got to go through to get the project exported. So we're going to stick to Android to begin with because it's a lot more frictionless. Once we're ready and we're pretty confident that we're done with the project and we're ready to put it on the App Store, we can deal with the iOS exporting then. All right, let's get on to the next feature we're going to add. I'm going to make a new scene here and I'm going to use a canvas layer. This is going to be my background. This is going to sit behind the game and give me something besides this boring gray nothingness. And so this is a canvas layer, which means I want it to I want to use that because I want it to be behind everything else. So I'm going to put it on layer negative one so that it will be behind everything. Let's save that. And then it's going to have a color rect set to full rect. That's going to be our background. Let's just stick that to black to start with. 
and already over here if we add this to our main we can instance this in here and we have a nice black background and now we have a nice black background and then I also this is another thing that's going to require some testing I like the way it looks but it also could be problematic with our phone export which is I want to add a world environment and we're going to say new environment and background mode we're going to set to canvas so that's what this is going to produce and I want to turn on glow depending on how you have the settings the glow can be uh, a little overdone but if you use it subtly it can look pretty good here are the glow settings I have settled on intensity 0.37 threshold 0.64 and additive mode and that's gonna look pretty good it's gonna give the circles a nice glow a little neon effect and the drawback to this is glow does not work in GLES 2 so if we wanted the effect in GLES 2 we would have to write a shader so depending on what we finally decide this might go back out the window again but until then I'm gonna keep it in there it's easy enough to add and it's easy enough to disable if it isn't working okay the other thing I'm gonna to add to the background here is I'm gonna add a CPU particles 2d and this is just like a particle 2d node it just uses the CPU instead of the GPU to do its um, animation and it is a little more mobile friendly um, again, since our game is not going to be at all taxing on the phone CPU, we have only a few objects on the screen at a time. Not a lot of, not a lot going on. It's not 3D uh, CPU particles. We can be fine with. Now, if you've done particles before, you know there's a lot of settings that you can play around with. And what I want this to do is to make a sort of background of floating circles as if they're off in the distance. So smaller circles that are just sort of coasting down. So I'll put in all the settings and I'll just go over them rather than have you watch me do everything. Okay, so here are the particles doing their thing. So they're just sort of coasting down in the background. So I set the amount to four, the lifetime to 20. That's how long they're gonna stay alive. Uh, Pre-processing to 10, that's so that when we first hit run, it's not going to be empty and we'll see the first one come on. They'll, it'll pre-run some of the anime or some of the particles so that they look like they've been running for some time already. In the draw section, I've put the circle texture, same one we used for our circle in the game. I changed the emission shape to a box, which means that's where these will spawn. So I've increased it to 240 in Y you notice it's going X and Y, you'll see why in a minute. Uh, spread I set to zero, gravity I set to zero. Initial velocity is 75 with a random factor of 0.6. That's why some of them are going a little faster and some a little slower. Scale I set to 0.2 because you know the full, full scale is way too big. And then I have a little bit of randomness on that too so that they're not all exactly the same size. Uh, hue variation is how we're getting the different colors. And then it's just centered above the top of the screen. And I rotate it at 90 degrees because the orientation of the particle node determines which direction uh, this initial velocity is pointing. So by default, it's pointing along the x-axis. So they were all emitting in this direction. So since we rotated it 90 degrees, that's why the variation in the box size is y because we're rotated 90 degrees but there we go so that looks pretty nice i think and will give us a little bit of something interesting to look at instead of a featureless nothing in the background and they're on a different layer from the circles so the glow does not apply to them all right that's going to do it for this one i'm going to put a copy of the Android APK in the notes section below. 
It'd be great if any of you out there with Android devices could throw it on there or export it yourself and give it a shot and let me know how things work. And we can try and get a handle on any other mobile issues that might be cropping up before we get too much further along in development. All right. Thanks as always for watching. Please uh, like and subscribe below and I'll see you in the next video. This tutorial is part of my new Godot Recipes website. The goal is to collect all the best tips and lessons to help make you a better Godot developer. If you like this video, I hope you'll go and check out the site. And make sure to hit subscribe so you'll be notified whenever I release new videos. Thanks for watching.